Well, hello, this is Anita Bean with BeanDesigns.com and I'm going to, this is the second video in a series of videos to create a scrapbook page using PaintShop Pro. Here is our finished product. We're going to open our page we started last time. So you get a file, recent files, PSP video. It's going to open up in layers our image that we started before. You can see our layers over on the layer palette. So let's pull our pictures into the program that we want to use. And here they are. Okay, this picture is selected, so I'll left click and drag it on just like we did our papers before. Very good. When you pull something into your page, it automatically goes to the center position on your page. I don't really want everything there. So I'm going to push my M tool for move. I'm going to grab that picture and pull it over a little bit to the left and this picture here. I want to make this selection to be a square. So I'm going to go to our select tool over on the left toolbar, selection, and I want to make the selection type a square. So I can uh, start at the top left. Let's make sure we have my son's layer selected. Go to the top left and build a square. If you're not happy with the exact location, you can right click just inside your selection and modify it. Good. I want to invert that selection and delete. and it deletes everything except for what I selected. Let's invert that selection once more. Now I can right click and move the same selection size over to the other picture. This gives us two pictures that are exactly the same size. Highlight her layer, invert the selection, and delete. Now I'm going to select None, and I want to push the D for the Deform tool to give that picture a little bit of a tilt. Choose my Sun's layer and give that picture a tilt. Now I want them to be closer together, so I'm going to push the M tool click on her picture and draw it closer. I want her picture to be on top of that ribbon so let's highlight the ribbon layer and drag it underneath the two pictures. Very good. I want to have I want to hold those pictures onto the page so I'm going to go to my photo prongs and pull in a red photo prong, drag it onto the page, move it on top of the layer. And this photo prong seems to be a tad bit large in relationship to the picture. I'm going to push the deform tool. You can grab on the left corner, I mean the top right corner there, any of the corners, and if you drag it, it will maintain its aspect, um, its ratio, its relationship. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that size, so let's rotate it just a bit. I'm going to grab it in the center and move it over closer for its location. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's duplicate it. 
So we'll go over to our layers, right click, duplicate. Now I can drag that down to this area. Right click on the layer, duplicate. Right click, duplicate. Move it to general location where I want it to be. You can do as many prongs as you want. That's how many I want. I'm going to deform and turn them around. Just put them in places here. Give them a general idea of where I want them to be. I'm going to do this for each for each prong down the down the row. Once I've finished putting them into place, I'm going to want to give them a drop shadow to give them a three-dimensional look just like we did on our ribbon in our previous tutorial. And remember before I told you that I had rearranged, I had customized my toolbar on the top and um, so my, my shadow is easily accessible right here, drop shadow. Then I choose my vertical and horizontal displacement. I'm going to change that to a 1 and a 1, leaving the opacity at 50 and the blur at 30. And um, that's the setting I would use for all of my prongs. So you can highlight each prong and give them a blur. I'm not going to take the time on the tutorial to show you how I did that, but all you would have to do is highlight your layer, click the drop shadow tool, and press OK. Let me show you where the drop shadow tool is. In this you go to Effects, 3D Effects, Drop Shadow. And your settings are the same that you had just used and push OK. Well, that's the end of the video two on creating a scrapbook page using PaintShop Pro. And I'll make the third video and we will bring in our stickers, put shadows on them, and we will do our letters. So I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and save in your native file, PSP image, so that you maintain your layers in case you want to modify it.